Hey everybody, today I'm going to kill two birds with one stone. The other day I looked at GNOME 43 and was very impressed. Now today I wanted to take a look at the K desktop environment, KDE 5.26, and we're going to be looking at some of the updates and changes that have come to it that make it real easy to use and real intuitive to use. But at the same time, I got a comment the other day, which I have been getting quite a few of kind of like it here recently, and I'm not even going to worry about blacking out the name or the icon because he obviously left it on my video so he's not really worried about what it says or how it says but i've been hearing a lot of this lately about linux needs to push the terminal to the background so people can just use the operating system so i'm going to read this comment tldr don't know why he started off with that for those of you that don't know what that is that's too long didn't read so i don't know if he's saying too long, didn't watch the video, or whatever. But, make the terminal less front and center so that Linux is more accessible to the layman. So I tried Linux, can't remember which one, but it definitely needs to be, in my opinion, simplified. That's why I stuck with Windows. But God, I'm tired of it and can't afford upgrading to a Windows 11 compatible PC, which I don't plan on moving to Windows 11 because from all the reviews I've seen, it's so much worse. I'll stick to 10 till it's no longer viable. Just hope by then, a Linux version comes out that's more comfortable for the layman and not a code junkie. What I mean by that is that the terminal needs to be only used in niche cases, not nearly all the time. You want Linux to grow? Push the terminal to the back end. The layman just want to click, install, and that should be the bulk of it. But for the more advanced users, it's still there but not required to simply install something but just make it more accessible. As you can plainly tell, my typing skill code isn't my forte. Also another reason Windows is just simpler to use. So we've read that. Let's zip on over to Firefox real quick. I don't know how many user-friendly distributions are out there. I'm just gonna go with Linux Mint. Uh, you can use Linux Mint, download it, never have to touch anything in the terminal. You can download uh, Pop! OS install it, click and download all the applications that you want without touching the terminal. And you can also use this distro right here, KDE Neon. It's based on Ubuntu, and let me tell you something, you never have to touch anything in the terminal. What bugs me is a lot of people, I think, get online and read articles, and then they go download some random Linux distribution, try to install it, and the first time they hit a brick wall they're like okay done too hard it sucks if you got to be in terminal i can't do this now he did state in his comment i'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt that he did try linux i don't know anybody that has ever tried linux that doesn't remember what distribution they tried i can remember my very first distribution i tried i tried ubuntu way back when then i ended up going to linux mint that's been almost 15 years ago i believe it was linux mint 8 i'll have to double check it may be a little older than that but anyway but you can download kde neon what's great about it is it comes with the most up-to-date version of the k desktop environment or kde 5.26 and you can scroll down through here and it's got a lot of great information and if you want to go check out the website all you got to do is go to neon.kde.org i'll be sure to include that link in the description below so right now we're just going to zip on over to the desktop so let's close out of firefox the only thing I have running in the background right now is OBS, and this is installed on bare metal. This is not in a virtual machine. I've got 8 gigabytes of RAM, and i5, and it's on a Lenovo IdeaPad 3. Now, first thing I want to cover is I've had a lot of people state in my past videos when they saw my KDE desktop, they said, how did you get your panel to look the way it looked? So we're going to cover that real quick, plus I'm going to show you an update in the settings app here. So what I'm going to do is right here, as you can see, I've already got a background. That's what it comes with. Now, GNOME, in all of its distributions, when you go from a light mode to a dark mode, kind of adjusts your wallpaper so it's a little darker and kind of blends in with everything. Well, guess what, everybody? You click on dark mode now and apply it. You now get a dark background. I love it. I think it's something minimal. It's something that's easy to bring to a desktop environment, but at the same time, it speaks volumes about how you can customize this desktop environment. Now, I would like to go ahead and minimize this because the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and right click right here, enter edit mode, 
and then zip over here to more options. Let's click on that and go ahead and switch that to a floating panel. Now we can close out of that and close out of that and we now have a floating panel. Now, if you want to take it a step further, let's go over to settings. Let's go over to appearance. And in appearance, I'm going to go over here and get new global theme. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to type in lay-in because that's the lay-in theme. Go ahead and let it search for that. And I'm going to go ahead. It's right here. Lay-in look and feel theme. Let's install that. Okay. It's going to have you put in your password. So go ahead and put in your password. Hit enter. And there it is right there. So what we're going to do is go ahead and use it. And after you use it, you see you get a little bit more subdued look down here. You get a little bit of transparency. But that's pretty much what you do there. But we're going to go ahead and look at some other things too. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. Yes, we will apply that. And we will minimize it. So now we got the dark theme set. Now, let's go ahead and open settings back up. And let me show you this. We've got appearance open. And we can go ahead and right click over here. Let's go ahead and configure desktop and wallpaper. And we will have that right there. And these are your wallpapers that come with everything. Now, what you want to do over here too, if you want to go to appearance, you can go application style, plasma style, colors. Now, if you want to do colors right here, we can pick, let's say we pick a, let's pick sweet space. Now, you can actually see the wallpaper. Instead of before, you had to click on it, then apply it to see it in the background. Now, it automatically gives you a preview of it. You still have to hit apply to make sure it stays there. But you can do this. And we can also come over here and go from current wallpaper. And that can kind of give you colors to set it up by. So if you wanted to go with something like that, it would go ahead and pick a color that matched that as well. Or you could do it from current color scheme. I'm going to go ahead and let's pick something like, let's just pick that. And let's go ahead and click apply. Okay, we've got that in the background. And you can see the color scheme now is set from there. So that makes things pretty simple, pretty easy to set up. Then you do have your splash screen over here. Let's go ahead and apply those colors. My bad. And then you've got laying in breeze over here. So let's go ahead and close out of there. Look at the way it is rounded now compared to before, guys. See that? It makes such a better look. It takes a while sometimes for that to kick in. Um, let's go ahead and open this up. Now, if you right-click on the app menu, you've always been able to see alternatives here. Okay, whether it be application dashboard, application launcher, or application menu. You can pretty much pick whatever you want and switch to it. And then when you open it up, it gives you a total different look over here. I do want to show you something else. Let's go back over here to settings. Let's go to appearance. I'm going to go ahead and go back to breeze in breeze dark. Let's go ahead and apply that. And we're going to switch back over. Now it's going to look a little bit more boxy because I don't have the rounded corners like you do on the lay-in theme. But I want to do something to show you something interesting. You can right click down here. And everybody knows you can change this to different things. You can go to application dashboard, which will make it a big one. So you can come down here and you've got a big screen application launcher. You can switch to that. And then it gives you the more customary KDE version. And then of course you could go to the smaller and then you've got the smaller version. Now for this video, I'm going to go ahead and set it to the application dashboard. So that way we've got the big version. Now, something neat in this release, it might not be much to y'all, but I think it's pretty neat, is you can right-click here. Let's configure Application Launcher, and there it is right there. You can actually add text next to your menu icon now. So let's say we just wanted to say Linux. Let's apply that. There you go. Sure, you could go down there and you could put something like, uh, let's go ahead and clear that out. You could put something like Start. I know everybody out there is going to be like, no! But you can actually add words there if you want to. Heck, I could even go up here and go clear and put in eBuzz. Oh, got to pick it. eBuzz. And apply. And there's my eBuzz. So that's just a little something there you can change up. Now, another thing here, you can open this up now. And when you go to favorites, right here, this is the way you're used to seeing your favorites. Okay. You can actually do those in a list now if you wanted to and you could always sort them alphabetically so let's apply that you can come back down here I'm sorry they're not sorted alphabetically they're showing in a list general shows them in all alphabet so all applications okay those would be alphabetical I apologize I tripped over my 
words there, guys. That's just a few of the little things that they brought to KDE 5.26 in the settings menu. I'm going to go ahead and close that. There's quite a bit under the hood that you could still go back and double check and look at for yourself. There's Dolphin. Now, let's get to the more meat and potatoes here. I haven't touched the terminal yet. This guy said that he wanted something that he could install and not ever have to touch the terminal. KDE Neon gives it to you. What about software? Okay, let's check out software. Discover Software Center's opening up. You can get any application that you need from right here. You never have to touch the terminal. You can do your system updates right here without ever having to touch the terminal. It'll show you your installed. It'll show you settings. It'll give you about. It pretty much lets you know anything and download anything you want to about this system. So, I just don't want to hear people say that Linux needs to be easier to use. It's horrible. You have to use the command line. That's, that's such crap. It's such crap, and I'm so tired of hearing it. Now, most of the people that watch my channel, I understand. You guys are probably at the same level, maybe a hair above me when it comes to knowledge of Linux, or maybe you have less experience with Linux. I know power users aren't watching my channel. You know why? Because they could give a crap less about desktop environments or this and that and the other. They're building from source. They're doing window managers and this and that and the other. So I'm speaking to those that are on the same level as me or just now getting into Linux and are just wanting to learn. Okay, stop listening to the bull crap. You can do Linux without ever having to touch the terminal. But I recommend you get used to using the terminal a little bit at a time. Use it for a system update. Use it to download an app here and there. Just become familiar with it. Why? Because once you start using the terminal more, it makes using Linux a lot more fun. Yes, you can just download this, boot into it, get all your applications and start using them and never have to touch the terminal. But there's fun to be had. There's fun to be had in Linux. You know why? I want everybody to do me a favor if you're still watching this video. Remember back to the very first computer you had, whether it was an Apple One or an Apple II or a Commodore or a, a, a Texas Instruments. Remember the fun you had. Commodore 64. Remember the fun you had being on a computer. Remember the fun you had learning. Remember the fun you had just being able to get on a keyboard and do something that somebody else couldn't do. It was empowering. It made you feel good. That's what Linux can do for you if you let it and get out of this, I'm just going to be a sheep. I'm on Windows. I'm on Mac. I'm on Android. I'm on iPhone. I ain't changing because it's too damn hard. I'm tired of hearing that. It's not too hard. You don't have to use the, the terminal, but I suggest you do. Look, guys, I'm sorry I rambled a little bit. Uh, if you would do me a big favor, please like this video. Likes are what keep my channel in the algorithm and keep videos like this in the algorithm so other people can see them. I'm sure if you've seen something in this video that's been helpful for you, that somebody else can find usefulness out of the video as well. Also, please subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost anything, and if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. If you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we produce, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, zipping over to PayPal and throwing us a donation, or go to Patreon and become a patron to the channel. All those links will be in the description below. As always, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.